Dear students, today I am going to talk something about Bacon and his essay of studies. You know that office studies is prescribed in your syllabus and it is expected from you that you must have read its text. If not, at the very outset I request you to go through the text surely. Uh, before I begin, I would like to say something about the need of this video lecture for you. Of course, the present circumstances that we are facing is the immediate reason for this experiment. But certainly, we'll be having this experiment in future also. I would also like to tell you that no video lecture or online lecture or YouTube lecture and no e-content is a supplement for a classroom lecture. The classroom teaching and the classroom environment is an experience in itself. But certainly these things, these resources, these e-technology thing is very important and it certainly equips us So, let us begin our discussion on Francis Bacon and his very famous essay of studies. Something about Bacon first. And I'm going to discuss about Bacon and his life in very brief. And I hope that you'll get good information, you'll get good resource materials. You'll try to collect good information about Bacon and his writings. Bacon as an essayist. Bacon and his characteristics as a writer, as an essayist. So you should try to get all these informations for yourself. Bacon or Francis Bacon as he was called as was born on January 22nd, 1561 in London. He studied law at the very famous Trinity College and he began his professional career in law, in judiciary. At a very young age of 23, he became a member of the British Parliament. He became a member of the British House of Commons. Uh, in his career as a consul and also as an statesman, Bacon wrote about the British court. Rather, he wrote for the British court. In 1584, he wrote a political memorandum titled A Letter of Advice to Queen Elizabeth. In 1592, on the occasion of celebrating the anniversary of Queen's coronation, Bacon wrote a very interesting piece. He wrote an, a speech on the praise of knowledge. I repeat the title, 
it was a very famous a very interesting speech on the praise of knowledge uh, 1597 is the year which is basically the beginning of bacon's publications he came up with his first publication which was basically a collection of 10 essays in 1597 and our essay that we are going to discuss today titled of his studies was a part of that 1597 collection of essays by francis bacon Uh, Bacon came up with the second edition of the essays in the year 1612, and it contained 38 essays, including all those 10 essays of the previous edition also. So it contained 38 essays, and then the third edition came one year before the death of Bacon. Bacon died in 1626. uh the third edition came in 1625 titled essays or counsels civil and moral and this collection had 58 essays uh bacon you know was a name in itself a huge name of elizabethan period a son of the renaissance england's own philosopher father of empiricism and very much known for his empirical approach towards life so he had a very flourishing career during the reign of elizabeth and also during the reign of king james but his later years were very sad he were he was he was involved in he said that he was involved in different kind of scandals related to his profession and it resulted in the loss of reputation the loss of his professional career etc but suddenly as england's own essayist as england's own philosopher as a renaissance son and as an empiricist philosopher he is a phenomenon in himself it is said that he had his own method of investigating the natural science which is very very popular as the baconian method of investigating natural science we as a student of literature look at him as the one who introduced the art of essay into literature into english literature so suddenly he was england's first major essayist uh now let us come to the essay that is there in your syllabus the essay titled of studies and uh, to begin with i would like to say that in my personal opinion you may disagree with it the thing which i like in this essay is it's a stylized latin vocabulary 
I love this. This is the, the, the kind of vocabulary, the kind of words from Latin has been used by Bacon in his writings and even also in this essay. It's certainly very brilliant. Another thing because of which I like this essay is the empirical approach. So you can see that the seeds of empiricism were already there in, 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 in this essay. And do remember that it was written somewhere around, sometime around 1597. The essay, at the beginning of the essay, uh, Bacon begins with underlining three very important purposes of his studies. Uh, he says that studies are done or should be done for gaining delight, that is number one, for ornamenting one's life, that is number two, and to improve one's ability, that is number three. So what Bacon is trying to tell us is that we should use our studies for these three purposes or we can use our studies for these three purposes. I repeat, for gaining delight, for ornamenting one's life and to improve one's ability. Students, Bacon in this essay is of the opinion that it is only a well-read and a learned man that can execute plans effectively. Only a learned and well-read man can manage his daily life with expertise. Only a well-read and a learned man can lead a healthy and stable life. Bacon thinks and he writes in this essay that his studies enrich life. His studies increase our ability to succeed in life. But, and this but is a big one, it's a huge but. Why? Because Bacon says that it is also very important when you are studying, it is also very important that what you are studying and how much you are studying. I mean, the period, the extent of the studying, how much in the sense, okay, the stretch, the period. He says that a sort of moderation is very important for his studies. A sort of moderation has to be practiced for his studies with regard to what you are studying and what is the stretch of what is the period of his study. Then moving ahead, he says that study for delight, as we were discussing earlier, is in privateness. A study for ornamentation is in discourse. I mean, the use, the use, you know. So when we study for delight, it can be done in privateness. It ensures privateness. It allows you privateness. When you want to enjoy, when you want to delight yourself, when you want to give pleasure to yourself. So that study for pleasure, study for delight ensures privateness. Whereas, the study for ornamentation, 
when you are when you are trying to decorate yourself with your studies when you are trying to what do you can say in hindi is when you are trying to make yourself so sajjit right so when you are trying to ornament yourself when you are trying to decorate yourself uh, when you are trying to what do you what do you, what 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 to say to gil, to to put some beauty in in you to put some glamour in you so a study for ornamentation ensures good discourse it enables you to have a good discourse and when you are studying for ability it ensures good judgment it ensures a good disposition of business it enables you when you are studying with a purpose of increasing your ability it will certainly increase your judgment your ability to judge it will certainly increase your ability to dispose of the things dispose of your business uh, further in the essay bacon says a very interesting thing and we'll have like to tell you once again request you once again that go and read the text read this line i'm i'm just presenting an idea of that line not the come not the, the, the actual line but it's in 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 a very beautiful manner bacon says that reading makes a full man conference leads to a ready man and writing makes an exact man So understand what he is saying. He is saying that reading, or the habit of reading, makes a full man. Whereas conference, your conversation, your 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 dialogues, your discourses, your interactions with people, right? So this conference leads to a ready man, and writing makes an exact man writing makes you exact bacon he says ke the prolonged period of his study i mean look here what he is doing you know now he is pointing out some of the demerits of course not the demerits of studies but the excess of his studies and what is that a prolonged period of his study may lead to sloth this is what I was, talk- I was talking about earlier that how much you are studying the stretch the period of his study you know so the prolonged the prolonged period of his study may lead to sloth it will lead to laziness another thing which bacon is talking is that when you are studying for the sake of ornamentation while doing so if you are doing it too much excess so this excess of your study for the sake of ornamentation will lead to affectation so any kind of affectation show off when you are studying that you you will you will you will make a show of your knowledge you will make a show of your learning that yes i have read this i have read such and such author i have read so much i am reading such and such text and such and such book if you are doing this for the sake of show off then you are not ornamenting yourself rather it will lead to affectation in your personality the third demerit the third thing which bacon mentions of course i would like to say it once again that it is not the demerit of his study it is the demerit of the excess of his study balki rather it is it is it is it is excessive dependence on his study earlier what he said that a study increases your ability through which you can judge 
you can make judgments and you can dispose of your business right now what bacon is doing okay, if you are making your judgment wholly based on study only it's a folly it's a mistake you cannot make judgments only on the basis of your studies so what matters is your surrounding is your environment what matters are the people around you so studying through the books only and making your judgments and dis disposition of business only through the help of your study is a mistake in itself fine so moving ahead there is again a very beautiful sentence by bacon about books and i'm again presenting a gist only believing that you will read the actual text what he says look here he says that some books are tested some books are just tested some are swallowed some books are swallowed there are some books which are chewed and there are only a few books that are digested yani kuch kitabein chakhi jati unme se kuch nikli jati hain kuch चबाई जाती हैं और कुछ ही ऐसी होती हैं जो हजम की जाती हैं रिपीटिंग अगेन सम बुक्स आर टेस्टेड सम आर स्वेलोड सम बुक्स आर च्यूड वाइल अ फ्यू आर डाइजेस्टेड सो बेकन एक्चुअली dislikes the act of reading the books only bacon dislikes the act of reading books only and he prefers do remember he prefers learning from the natural source not learning from the nature around learning from your surrounding learning from your experiences learning from your interactions with the people so this is what he wants to say he says and he clarifies that study without experience is useless uh towards the finishing part towards the end part of the essay there is a very interesting thing which bacon talks he talks about a specific field of his studies you know that nowadays we are talking about specializations that such person is an specialist in such thing such doctor is an specialist in such and such area that teacher is an specialist in say for example victorian age so it's a time of a specialization people are specialized people are specializing in different things bacon in the 16th century was talking about a specific fields of study and he says in this essay that a specific fields of study sharpen the mind in a specific ways and the examples he takes look here he says that history makes men wise poetry makes men witty mathematics make them subtle and natural philosophy makes them deep ethics make them grave serious ethics make them makes them grave whereas subjects like logic and rhetoric make them able to contend uh students when we look at the essay 
in a nutshell and when we try to take out the gist of the essay we can see that this particular essay titled of studies highlights the benefit of studies by considering this act the act of studies by considering this act as a medicine for defects of the human mind and the source of enhancing one's wit so two things the benefits of studies two things this act of study is a medicine for the defects of human mind that is number 1 and number 2 is this that it is a source of enhancing one's wit if you ask me to tell you the theme of this essay i like to say that the essay actually is about the joy of study that how study enhances our thinking how study enhances our ability to speak how study enhances our ability to write and it adds charm to our personality so in one sentence the theme can be of course it is my opinion you may say disagree to this that a study brings us joy and enhances our thinking speaking and writing abilities and add adds charm to our personality so that can be a gist of this essay the essay also emphasizes on the importance of knowledge do remember the emphasis is not on in studies the emphasis is on the importance of knowledge the emphasis is also on open mindedness so this is what bacon emphasizes he is talking about the importance of knowledge he is also talking about the inculcation of open mindedness what was the purpose of writing this essay for example why bacon wrote this essay what he wants to say through this essay the main purpose of bacon through this essay is to guide people in experiences they might come across as they live in the world i repeat the main purpose through this essay bacon wants to guide people in experiences they might come across as they live in the world he encourages the reader us the readers to bring our bookish knowledge in practical use so whatever we study should be put to test uh as far as the analysis of the style of this essay is concerned took bacon is a beautiful writer the language he uses the vocabulary he has is at par and this essay is enriched by the intellectual wisdom by the pragmatic approach and by the practical knowledge of its author at this point i would like to suggest you to look at the use of parallelisms in the essay i'm not going to give you any example you know that i'm not in the habit of giving you these kind of things and and i i always ask you to go to the text 
So I would like to tell you, I would like to assert that you should, when you are analyzing the essay, when you are evaluating the essay, you should look towards the use of parallelisms in this essay. Another very interesting thing in this essay which you should look at is the use of tricolons. You must have heard about colons, semicolons, but this essay has an interesting thing. You should notice the use of tricolons in this essay. As far as the style of the prose that is used by Bacon here in this essay is concerned, you know that he was a great master of that very famous aphoristic style. So a very concise aphoristic style has been used. A manner of direct speaking, a direct style has been used. Precision is, 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 is a very important thing. The essay is actually an intellectual discussion. Remember that Bacon was an empirical philosopher. So this exercise, this essay is actually an exercise of intellectual discussion. And hence, the tone of this essay is very formal, very serious. The tone is very formal. Uh, you can also search for some kind of didacticism involved in this essay. I am not saying that this is a purely didactic essay. Bacon was not that sort of a writer. But there is certain element of didactic didacticism when Bacon is laying out the value of knowledge in practical terms. As far as the methodology used in this essay is concerned, you know that very famous comparison and contrast technique? that comparison and contrast method that has been used in this essay. Another very important method, methodology which Bacon has used is that very famous illustration method that is used in this essay. Apart from that, when you are studying that linguistic stylistic feature of this essay, you should also notice the similes and metaphors used in this essay. Again, I am not going to point out all those things, it is for you to search, but yes, you should, in your search, you should take care of looking for similes and metaphors in this essay. You should also use, you should also look at the use of archaic words in this essay. And of course, do remember all those Latin things, all those Latin constructions, phrases that Bacon uses. Uh, towards the conclusion of my lecture, I would like to suggest you one thing, which you know, in, our, in my class also, I am in the habit of telling you that how you should make your answer different from the other students, from the students of other college, from the students of other institutions is that you should convince your examiner that whatever I am presenting is not because of that the, the textual reading of that text only. It is also not because of having a study material on that text only. But I have really, really read that text and even I have done some additional readings also. So for additional reading, I would like to suggest to you that you should read Dr. Samuel Johnson's essay titled Honest Studies. This is Bacon's essay titled Office Studies. I am suggesting you to read Dr. Samuel Johnson's essay Honest Studies, which was written by Dr. Samuel Johnson in 1753 and it was published in Johnson's journal The Adventurer. So concluding my lecture here, I would like, like to sum up that this essay, I mean Bacon's office studies, conveys an overwhelming message that a carefully balanced approach to study is best. A carefully balanced approach to study is best. Allow plenty of time for learning and what type of learning? Learning that does not come from books. 
learning around, learning your surrounding, learning the people with whom you interact, learning even the people with whom you live. So that's all from my side. Thank you very much.